Hello again. Today I want to speak about the third Gamba Sonata by Johann Sebastian Bach. It is a BWV 1029. This sonata, as opposed to the previous two, is in three movements, not four. And here Bach borrows style galant, which was more modern at the time, almost basing the, the uh, feel of tutti and solo on a Vivaldi concerto, uh, for example. So. The beginning is the 2D, uh, in quotes. <laughs> um, in quotes because that form actually is, is not exactly uh, the 2D solo concerto style. The idea is there, but of course Bach writes in a polyphonic manner and um, fugues are in there and uh, all kinds of uh, other things that are much more complicated, so. This beginning could be a Vivaldi concerto. I think of it as heroic. Uh, it is vertical. Um, and when we come to bar three, I feel a uh, more horizontal uh, line. This is uh, horizontal, vertical. And as you see, I, I like also shaping um, this and showing the difference uh, by uh, shorter strokes on the eighth notes. And again, long, short. Uh, so. As you see with the red dots, I show you where I think the emphasis lies and where I like elongating or uh, punctuating or sitting a little longer on on those notes, showing usually a change in harmony that's important or show, showing the pillars of support, uh, which I speak about in the, my other uh, musings. Just sitting a little bit on, uh, for example, the F sharp in bar six. D. Here, uh, the D and the A. What we have here is a half a bar a sequence, and here that is uh, there's a diminution and a cadence. Uh, you can choose to uh, add a trill, if so probably starting from the upper auxiliary. Um, here, when we have a trill marked over the G in bar 12, since we're in a fast uh, pace, I would do a turn instead so that we're not bogged down. connect the dots, if you will, in bar 13. We have D, C, uh, Coming back to the idea of the 2T, this ends in a cadence uh, in bars 8 and 9. The two solo voices enter with the long trills in measure 9 and 11. But, however, this process only reminds us of a concerto. The writing is polyphonic and fugal. Measures 35 and 73. The harpsichord solo line joins in unison with the cello. There is a closing ritornello in measure 95, uh, which reminds us of a passage in uh, the first movement of uh, Brandenburg Concerto No. 2 by Bach, where all the parts are reduced to three parts uh, playing in unison. Just a few spots to think about. In bar 28, uh, listen to the keyboard. They have the main melody part. So again, connecting the dots, if you will, or looking at that long line, um, starting in bar 30. Um, B flat. A. G. F. A new idea with 
starting with a D in bar 32. E, F. So the line was going down at first and now it's going up. Here we are together with a pianist or a harpsichord, uh, bar 35. Uh, I would bring out this. Here we are alone. A lot of musical sense to play the G on a harmonic thumb position uh, on the G string. Nevertheless, it really uh, is way safer than playing uh, with a big jump. So, uh, this is very tricky and especially uh, in a fast uh, tempo, which this movement is. So, I think that's totally fine. Um, the keyboard has a lot going on there, so uh, we're we're gonna be sort of camouflaged. Going on in bar 41, we have again that horizontal and then vertical uh, patterns going back and forth. Forty-five. I like using fancy slurs. Uh, uh, the reason for those all those up bows on um, beginnings of groups is so that we finally arrive in bar forty-six. The down bow is strong as opposed to what happens before. We have the tune in bar 46. Uh, bar 48 again, we have that long line uh, G, F, E flat, D. Um, here we can start a little less. And build. more lyrical so here those are with the keyboard again with the keyboard um, when I practice I like to practice with a recording sometimes so that I have a clear understanding of what's happening harmonically while I'm playing my part of course, you have to find a recording that you really, really like and not get into bad habits. That could be a challenge because the Baroque recordings are also a half a tone lower, as you know. One of my favorites is um, Andras Schiff. Uh, I can add a link uh, down in the description box for you to hear it. Um, and then we have a pedal point in bar 62. <laughs> Bar 68 is lyrical in my opinion. And here I like um, changing the articulation to be a little shorter. Uh, I think of those bars as one uh, bar units. Uh, I like showing uh, the upbeat and the downbeat. So the upbeat E flat to bar 71 and the D downbeat and the following bar on. So in context. And here we have a beginning again. You can um, go ahead and mark in your part every time that we play that theme uh, and compare and contrast those entrances. Maybe last. I would 
would stay up, uh, keep it up in bar 80, uh, and again 81, two. We start another long crescendo line uh, in bar 92. Um, and here we have a uh, culmination of uh, all voices together. Um, here, bring this up. Verse 87. Here I use my thumb uh, two, three, so thumb on bar a hundred. scooping expressive uh, uh, ways of playing uh, here in or 103 yeah the A flat is so expressive repeated gesture and again notice uh, the diminution if we are aware of those uh, little things uh, it makes our performance much more translatable to the audience uh, separation and again I would just roll the octave rather than um, so that we can hear both notes thank you and we'll see you in the adagio <laughs>